This is what you can do about taking control of your own health, a podcast for people interested in learning how to create bodies <clears throat> that are healthy, strong, fit, and disease resistant. I'm Sean McLennan, your host. I'm a certified personal trainer, an author, and a health and fitness enthusiast. Thank you for joining me today. Um, my featured book for this episode is my book called What You Can Do About Belly Fat. Almost everybody at some point has wondered how to get rid of belly fat. And for most people, no matter what they do, they can't seem to get rid of it. If that's you, check out my book called What You Can Do About Belly Fat. In it, you'll learn why fat accumulates around the midsection, the importance of paying attention to a, a type of fat called visceral fat, and you will receive key exercise, eating, and lifestyle strategies to help your body target belly fat based on my personal training experience, as well as my experience with reducing my own body fat to around 10%. So if you're ready to take steps to melt belly fat away naturally and keep it away, this is your book. Buy your copy on Amazon.com um, using the link below where you can search for the title, What You Can Do About Belly Fat. All right, all right. The information on this podcast is based on personal research and opinion. and It's not meant to be a substitute for advice from a doctor or a physician. You are advised to consult your doctor or physician before making any changes to your lifestyle. <clears throat> All right, let's excuse the microphone bumping and thumping. I had to reposition it a little bit. All right, so um, in today's episode, I just want to talk about how it feels good to feel good. And um, the reason why I'm recording this is because I'm kind of like getting over something um, myself, I had like a pretty bad headache over the whole weekend and, um, it kind of happens to me sometimes where like I might sleep a certain way and I guess it, I sleep with my neck crooked and so it must affect blood flow and, and then I get this headache that kind of gradually builds from the moment that I get up from that until like a few hours later and it throbs and aches and makes me feel even sometimes if it's bad enough, it makes you feel nauseous and almost, you know, maybe it's a migraine or something like that. I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> but anyhow, that happened to me because I caught myself trying to take a nap and I laid on this couch, a couch that every time I, every single time I lay on it, I feel this way. Every single time I start, I, I feel bad. And so sure enough, after I got up from the short nap, which was not even a full nap, um, I know I was sleeping awkward and I immediately started feeling weird. I'm mostly good now, but that was like two days ago. And so I felt bad that evening. I felt bad almost all of yesterday, even though the headache had improved some. And then this morning, the headache is pretty much 90% gone. It's just, I kind of feel a little loopy, so to speak. But anyhow, you know, it made me, it made me think about, you know, since I'm on the other side of that now, it made me feel about, think about how good it feels just to feel good. It feels very good to feel good. And you don't really understand that until you don't feel good, you know? Um, and so I was thinking about that and it made me kind of think about how much we do that as a society. When I say do that, I mean, we don't necessarily value how we feel until something happens to our health. And then we actually start to put some value on health. So I wanted to share some thoughts on that. Um, really in particular as to why, in my opinion, we do, we do that. So the first thing is I, I um, was thinking, thinking that um, number one, we take our health for granted. In other words, we go every day, day in, day out, feeling the way that we feel. Um, and we feel like we're always going to feel that way. You're just going to get up and get to it. You know, we don't really leave any room for like feeling differently because this is what we expect. It's kind of like our routine, get up and go. Um, and you know, if you've lived in the world for a while, you kind of understand that that's not the case. You know, sometimes you might catch, you know, like a viral illness or something or, um, you know, you might mess around and 
you know, strain a muscle or something like that. And that kind of like has you needing to recover for a while. So, you know, but we take it for granted. We take it for granted, especially when we're young. We kind of take it for granted. On the young part, we the reason we take our health for granted is because we're taught to do that as young people. My main point for um, the main reason I say that is because of the food that we give our kids or the food that we call kids food. And I've talked about this way in the past before, but why in the world do we call pizza, hot dogs and hamburgers, fries, candy, um, soda, you know, orange and, and grape <laughs> or whatever kind of soda you know, kids drink sunny delight and all that. Why do we consider that kids food? And the reason why I say that is because most, if not all that has little to no nutritive value aside from if somebody puts some vitamins and minerals in there after the fact. And furthermore, a lot of those are actually detrimental to health. So they don't add to health and they definitely subtract from health particularly if consumed often. And we have kids on this stuff often. I know my kids come from school, um, you know, relatively often or kid functions and having candy and stuff like that. And um, yeah, we give this to them. And at the same time, us as older people will say, yeah, you can eat that because you're young. You know, and, um, nah, man, it's like, but what I'm saying is we learn as younger people that you can take your health for granted, that you can kind of keep on doing whatever until you feel bad. Okay. So that's the first point I want to make. We've, we, we take our health for granted. The second, um, thing with this, that, uh, this second point I want to make with this whole concept of how we don't really value our health until something makes us not feel very good is we've learned to see our health as a matter of chance and luck. Like we've learned that, you know, like if somebody gets sick or something like that, we're like, mm, man, it got them, you know, um, or you just never know, you know, those different type of things. Those are different kinds of things that we say, um, which show the way that we consider health, the way that we think about health. We kind of think that you just you just have it or you don't have it. And you're lucky as long as you do have it. And so you just kind of keep on operating and just kind of hoping somehow that everything is okay. Um. So yeah, we, we, we think that a lot of this stuff is luck of the draw. On that note, Genetics comes up with this. So say, for example, you're somebody who something runs in your family, obesity, diabetes, whatever. A lot of times we think that if we are dealing with a particular health issue, it's simply because of bad luck, bad genetics. You know, my whole family was big boned, you know, as, as people say. My whole family is big boned, so... I have, I'm a bit boned as well, you know, or yeah, it's just a matter of time till I get diabetes or that's why my blood sugar high, you know, my folks get it, but it's an excuse, man. It's an excuse because it's definitely recent, relatively recent studies have shown the, 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 uh, small part that genetics has to play. So it's not to say that genetics doesn't have a, a place to play in particular, you know, whether or not a person deals with a certain type of illness or disease or whatever. However, what matters way, way more is the environment for a person. And I should have gotten statistics on this, um, or like specific notes. Um, but it's something that I've learned about even more and more in the past several months, <clears throat> but it's genetic expression where certain types of genes 
will not express themselves unless they're given a certain type of environment. For example, genes for disease not expressing themselves unless they're in a in the presence of a high stress, which might be indicated by a lot of cortisol or a lack of nutrients and different things like that. Um, chronic stress or just, you know, malnutrition, different things like that. Genetic expression is highly influenced by environment. Genes turn on and off based on the environment that they're given. In other words, what we do with our bodies. So your family genetics ends up just totally honestly being more of an excuse. Here's the thing. When we look at our health as a matter of chance and luck, what we have to understand is, look, let me talk to you in particular. Your body, I don't care where you come from or whatever, your body has basic needs. Your body needs, for example, water. It needs quality nutrition through food. It needs movement. It's made to move. It needs sleep, adequate sleep. It needs social connection, family connection, friends. And these are among the basic needs that the body has. And you have to understand that. You have to understand that it's not just a matter. Well, it isn't a matter of luck or chance at all. It's a matter of providing your body with what it needs. Now, you know, somebody, for example, may tolerate dairy while another person may not. But that doesn't mean that if a person, the person who can't tolerate dairy gets like some sort of related ailment because they consume dairy. That doesn't mean that they have bad luck. It just means for some reason, the bloodline that they come from. Um has adapted or evolved or whatever to not be able to deal with dairy. That's just what it means. So it doesn't mean that you are less than they are, or you just got bad luck. It means you need to give your body what it needs. You need to listen to your body. You see what I'm saying? Um, but as long as you give your body what it needs, then it'll function the way it's supposed to function. Like why wouldn't it? Um, function the way it's supposed to if you're actually giving it what it needs is the key. Now, the third thing I want to mention on this topic is we've learned to value everything else above our health. In Western society, in American society, we value money. We value, um, you know, popularity. We value entertainment. We value uh, food <laughs> um, and many more things way over our health. We prioritize those things in a lot of cases as if they are more important than, than our health. When in actuality, it is having health that allows you to enjoy all of those things I mentioned and more. Because if you don't have health, then you, you tend to not really care about money or entertainment. For, for example, when I felt bad, you know, I didn't really want to do anything except for just sit, sit around and just, you know, whatever, just veg. I didn't want to do anything else because it didn't really matter in that moment. You know, you can have billions of dollars. I'm, I'm convinced. And that stuff won't mean anything to you whenever you feel physically bad. Um, and another reason that we value everything else above like our health is because we keep on putting it off. We keep on thinking that I'm going to have a chance later on to kind of do this right. So I'm just going to grind through, grind through, grind through. And then at some arbitrary undefined moment, I'm going to do right. As if we know we're going to have that opportunity. And you just don't know. You just don't know. And I mean, I've known that, unfortunately, people who I've known close to me who, who have dealt with illnesses, who've even passed away, and who were determined to get their health right and all this type of stuff. And, you know, it got to the point where, you know, whatever kind of physical stuff kind of caught up to them. 
And um, that's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to be morbid. I'm not trying to be, you know, encourage fear. It is a matter of just being realistic. It's like we keep on prioritizing. And I don't know. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying these people that I know were prioritizing this and that or whatever over health. But a point that I am making more so is we, we, we still end up being kind of focused on other stuff and we're used to not necessarily taking care of ourselves, you know, from the beginning. And so we just kind of kick the can with our health. We keep on kicking the can, especially when they're even, I meant to say, even when we kind of start to see signs that our health is, um, that your our bodies are kind of starting to lose some resiliency. Okay. So my appeal to you is prioritize your health. Don't wait to feel bad to want to feel good. Cause a lot of times when we feel bad, that's when we're ready to do almost anything to feel good again. You know, that's, that's where this health stuff comes in, you know, um, becomes valuable. A lot of times, for example, case in point, I recorded a podcast uh, relatively recently about, you know, how studies are showing that ob- being obese and overweight was a risk factor for um, for COVID and for viral illness in general. Um, so the thing is, if you prioritize your health and say, for example, you need to lose some weight. Anyway, then you being at a healthy weight doesn't, it doesn't mean that you wouldn't get like a cold or COVID or whatever. But what it does mean is that your body is that much better for if, if you actually contract it, your body will be better able to deal with it without excess inflammation and, and with a lot less potential for, um, you know, complications and stuff like that. You know, whereas you can kind of be like more so just kind of like, oh, I ain't going to get nothing like that. And I'll get around to losing the weight and everything and um, and potentially put yourself, you know, in danger. From kicking the can. So don't don't just take your day in and day out. You know, you feeling ba- feeling good and whatever. Um, don't just take that and just be kind of dismissive of your health. Like actually take the time to prioritize, to focus on your health, to do something for yourself. Even if it's starting out with a little bit of something, if you know you have weight to lose, if you know that you have to, you need to stop eating all that sugar. And, um, if you've been having aches and pains and you know that inflammation is high in your body, now is the time. Now is the time. Because when it really catches up to you, then you're going to be wanting to do a lot and you don't want to get to a place where there's not really much you can do. Okay. So please hear what I'm saying. Um, And the last thing I want to say before I end this podcast is in some cases, some of us actually don't feel a hundred percent. We already are at a place where for a long time we haven't felt a hundred percent and we're used to feeling that. And we don't even necessarily remember how it feels to feel good. If that's you, I want to encourage you, don't lose hope. Or I want to challenge you even to make radical changes to your lifestyle. Whatever it is that you know that you can do better in, whether that means getting enough sleep or drastically increasing your fruit and vegetable intake. Um, drastically reducing, if not eliminating junk food intake, sugary drinks, do something for yourself. You know, seeing if you have, have any food sensitivities like gluten sensitivities or lactose or anything like that and going ahead and like dealing with those, deal with, deal with that stuff. And then when you start to feel the difference, when you start to feel better, you feel the brain fog lift you know, you feel less pressure on your joints from ex- excess weight and you see that your body looks better. You feel less joint pain. You're going to remember and and health in that moment is going to be so much more valuable to you. It's just 
That's that's usually how it works. But do something about it, okay? Don't lose hope. As long as you as long as you're alive, as long as you're able to learn from hopefully podcasts like this one or whatever, there's an opportunity that opportunity that you have. So take that opportunity, okay? All right, if you like this episode, please make sure you you share it, like it, make sure you subscribe to this podcast, make sure you get a copy of my book, What You Can Do About Belly Fat. Um, the link is in the description below. And always remember, your doctor is not responsible for your health. You are. God bless you.